When you're young and time takes an age, it feels like nothing will ever change. But it does. Sometimes it comes so fast and so hard that the shape of the world, the shape of the people, are never the same afterwards. 1923 was like that, not just with us, not just in the village, but everywhere. My mother recognised it straight away. Or maybe it was something she'd always known. The rest of us, the rest of the world, just had to catch up, change shape, make up our minds. Well, that was me. <laughs> He's died, Ellie. Ah, oh, well, he'll have to. It'd take a long time to slaughter an herd that size. The whole herd? Well, if one of them's got it, they'll have it. Will our cows get it? No. No. Grass fed, clean air, no hot fetid cow shed to pass TB on. I'm not worried, Mum. So, you knew all along. What's that? Well, losing the cow shed was a good idea. Farmer's instincts. My heart was trying to make a decision. Morning, bird. It's first real decision. But it wasn't a matter of politics. You can take him, if you like. No. You'll miss it. Wait for me. Agnes. More food from our table. Bread and eggs won't break us. Not so long ago it would have done. Well, let's be thankful we're not there any longer. I'm going to see Ankin later. See about taking over Rutter's order. Can we manage that much? We could. All these years we've... we've we fought to keep going, and now we got a chance to, to get on. We have to take it, Grace. He shouldn't meddle. We won't welcome it here. She needs help, John. Come on, Mary, love. Why are you shooting buzzards? Going for the young grouse. Can't pass through here. Not safe. I've cycled this path for years. Not anymore. Oh, who say so? Then we'll own it. The Allinghams. Oh. Turn around.
goodness. Are you all right? It's not fair. Gilbert Hankin had no right to sack you. It's not his fault. Well, is it your fault? You couldn't breathe properly. Allingham. Allingham? He thinks I complained about being sick. That's the end of it. Oh, no, 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 no. Allingham should be stood up to. It'll make no difference. And you'd stand with me. I will. Are these your initials, Middleton? And <laughs> you were a right bastard, Dyingham. Children are lucky to have Mrs. Ellenham. She wrote me a letter. Well, I thought she wrote me a letter. It turned out it wasn't her. <sighs> Martha, it's, she's impossible. She's a married woman. What did you expect was going to happen, Bert? Who did write it then? Phoebe Rundle. Oh, well. There you go. I've been telling you, haven't I? Phoebe Rundle is, in the opinion of this teacher, the girl for you. But... If what you feel can change so quickly, how will I know when it's real? Test it out. Spend some time with her and then check your heart rate. <laughs> oh, don't laugh at me. No, no, I would never do that. Go on, just get away with it and test it out. I wasn't sure you'd be here. But... Just for the morning, then Glossop and Chinley, Sheffield tonight. You must be Mary? Who are you? <laughs> I'm Bill Gibby. Delighted to make your acquaintance. Go on. Where do you stand on tariff reform? <laughs> uh, I'm against it. Labour is against it. So is Mrs Allingham. Good for Mrs Allingham. Father said it doesn't matter who wins. Well, I think it does. So does Mother. Go on, you. <laughs> Off to school. <laughs> I, I, I know you, you're very busy, but um, I wanted to talk to you about the girl who lost the job at the boot factory. Agnes Scoop. See, I don't know what else to do. Gilbert Hankin, the manager, now, he was just following orders from Allingham, and I, I can't speak to Allingham because... Then don't. What? You're forgetting about the people who matter. Just speak as you find. You find right, Grace. No need to stop. Where can we find Gilbert Hankin? We're here to ask you to reinstate Agnes Scribner. She's being replaced. The decision's been taken. By you? Agnes? Dear, for seven years. Did she ever not finish her work? Ever complain? There's nothing I can do.
Thank you for your time. Your fellow worker was sacked from a job here through no fault of her own. Right now, you're all vulnerable to the same injustice. He can't make the boots without your labour. Your labour? To offer? Or to withhold? As long as Allingham runs this factory and speaks for you in Parliament, he can do with you as he wishes. But you can hold him accountable. We can hold him accountable. If you vote Labour this week. <laughs> they listened. But they won't come out for Agnes. They're afraid. But there'll be no hanking or Allingham between them and the ballot box. Yeah. Allingham underestimates us. And them. Sheffield Tree Bill. We show them a better option, and they'll take it. Lead by example, Grace. But I'm... A farmer's wife. And I'm a miner. And I think we can change the world. So am I. Sorry? 2nd of June, 1924. I'll be 30. Until then, no vote. So don't worry, my opinion isn't important and won't be taken seriously by anybody. I trust you'll be using your vote to do good. Good being a vote against your brother-in-law. I may not have a vote, but I do have my own mind and my own conscience. And always so sure of them both. Phoebe. Can I ask you something? Oh, of course. Bert Middleton? Yes. Do you trust him? Yes. Then I should. No. No, keep him working. Because the more he can't have you, the more he'll want you. Finest gramophone money can buy. Hey, Margaret. I've seen you at the dance hall yet. You want to come, give it a try. Well, before or after I serve myself. If we'd money for music, we'd money for help. Shot! Thank you. It's the word. Saying is, you might want to think twice in future before getting right, right. <clears throat> before getting your milk from Rutter. He's had to slaughter his whole herd. TB's been setting for months. This is the first time in your life you've been in this shop. What are you after? Is he? Mine's clean. Open pasture. No risk. No disease. See? Clean. Milk. Straight from Middleton Farm to Ankin's shop. Me and you now in between. Hmm. So. It's a risk you're taking. Can't I trust you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You're a risk taker, aren't you? I mean, that, uh, that dance hall, that would have shot in dark, wouldn't it? Hmm. There's a businessman in you after all, John Middleton. Where you been? Ankin takes Middleton milk now. Mother! 
She's gone to see Edmund Allenham speak. What about Derry? Finished. No more mad dashes to the station. Those days are gone, Bert. Change of plan. Welcome to you all. Uh, I won't be making a speech. Why? Because I want to hear from you about your concerns and what you want. Let's make this a conversation. Questions from the floor. Who's first? Mrs. Middleton. Yes. C can the workers in your factory rely on you, Mr. Allington? Could you repeat the question a little louder so everyone hears it? I was wondering whether the workers in your factory can rely on you. Well, the factory has provided employment for half the village since 1904. We provided thousands of pairs of boots for our brave men at the front. And it provided employment for you when hard times on your farm meant that you needed the work. Now that through his hard work and determination, things are looking so much better for your husband, well, you don't need the work. Agnes Scrivener does. The girl is an agitator. Are you an agitator, Mrs. Middleton? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean when How you... How much time have you been spending with Bill Gibby, Mrs. Middleton? I think you went to the factory this morning to agitate with Gibby, and I think you've come here primed to agitate some more. Is Gibby with you now? Is he behind you, telling you what to say? Where, where is your puppet master, Mrs. Middleton? <laughs> Shall we take another question? What do you say? How much he admires you, mostly. Why? What oh, you've done turning the farm around. Good. Is it? Isn't it? We've done well here, Grace. Why does it seem like you don't want it? We need to look outside of ourselves. I deliver good, fresh, clean milk to all village at a fair price, and I can do that because I've worked hard. Read them to me. Clover, Vertel, Bracken, Buttercup, Henrietta, and Hilda. Father said we could name our cows. What's the name of our grandson? What's the name of the little baby boy the Allingham sent away without even asking us? They don't care about anybody else other than themselves. Now, is that the kind of world you want? Agnes Scrivener, she's a problem. My factory, my village, my constituency, it looks bad. The left love a victim. They crave victimhood, and when they get it, they milk it for all it's worth. Thank you, Mother. Sir, what do you think? Well... Take it away from them. Sorry? Their poor little match girl, Martha. What do you mean, take it away? Give her a job back, pay her more. Mm. Then Gibby and Labour will have nothing to bleat about. Have I suddenly acquired a second political advisor? I haven't got a political bone in my body, darling. Oh, by the by, and entirely away from politics, the tremendously glamorous, fabulously well-connected and hitherto unmarried Harriet Kilmartin is coming to stay.
<laughs> so, how is it going on railways? <laughs> oh, no, look here. No. And after next week, no more station visits. Why not? Our dads have got into bed together. <laughs> That's milk run to the station Wednesday. So, you better make it count. This man here is giving me lessons in romance. <laughs> Phoebe's the one for me, he says. Pints. Uh, and the first lesson, don't go where your teacher would like to tread. She's a married woman. You to give Agnes a job back. You told me to get rid of her. Well, now I'm telling you to bring her back. I know why you're doing this. You're using her. Does it matter? Well, I'm making her ill. She won't want to come back. She will. to the dance hall looking like that. Well, between the shop and the home and the dance hall, I'm afraid things are starting to slip. I just don't have the time. <sighs> if you want to take on a maid, you can. It's just a case of finding someone suitable. Mm. No, ma. Gilbert explained what happened at the factory. It's not my place to take sides. So I won't. But it might end up being an excellent opportunity for you. We're looking for a maid. I'm offering you the position. I'm grateful to you and Arnold. Good. Mr. Hankin and I would like you to start tomorrow. Looks like rain. The cows were lying down as I came past. You believe that old wives' tale? Well, I could give you a lift anyway. No. Thank you. driver. <laughs> Why let someone else have all the fun? 
course. Thank you so much for this invitation, Lady Allingham. Oh, Clem, <laughs> please, I insist. Harriet. Harry. It's such a pity that Lord Kilmartin couldn't come with you. All is the election for my father at the moment, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, yes, well, I, uh, I must confess that I'm rather hoping there'll be an antidote to a similar situation here. I'll try my very best. <laughs> Actually, can I call you Lady Ellingham? I do so like ladies. Do you know what Edmund stands for? It's my brother. It's politics, not family. One and the same to some. Like my mother. It's so awful to be part of us. Nan can pass some of your news. I got your job back at the factory. The Hankins have taken me on as a maid. <laughs> You'll go back to the factory. This suits me better. Ow! You're hurting me! You'll go back to the factory. Stop! Do you think you can hide it from Mankin, eh? They'll know it's yours. Go back to the factory and I'll sort out the rest. Don't. And you're on your own. It's not me who'll be judged. I judge you. Helping Alf Rutter. Same thing happened with the outbreak on Edale Farm. Getting it over quickly will help him with it. Poor beggar. Have you seen him? Head stuck in a pine pot in the lamb. This can work. Father won't like it. Father's not here. Sir Piers Raymond, wounded at the Battle of Marston Moor in 1644. His mastiff stood by him for over a day, waiting for him to be rescued. Marston Moor was over in two hours. <laughs> what kept them? How do you know it was? Oh, we were there. The Kilmartin Cavaliers with Prince Rupert. Oh. And two centuries before that, Agincourt. Oh, we were at Agincourt. And mm. just before that, to our eternal shame, Bannockburn. Our family's always been loyal. And commanded loyalty. Even from Mastiffs. <laughs> I love dogs. I really love like, big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> She's sort of like a child, isn't she? My husband's name is, um, was Allingham, and it's a line prone to sensitivity. <laughs> Caro and George are Allinghams. And Edmund? Well, 
I'd like to hear your assessment. A worthy descendant of the peers. <laughs> Fancy us both being at Agincourt. <laughs> Burn them. Fire purifies. Kills the bad left behind. Father says the Holy Ghost is like fire that cleans men's souls. Men can be good. Not all souls need burning. I don't believe him. Is this a song we're in? <laughs> Even Bester thinks we should be married. And does he? Mm. And if I don't want to be? Then you must be strong with yourself. And think about what's best, rather than what you want. She runs with all the best people, my darling boy. It's not as if you wouldn't have fun. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Harry. This anger it rises up so strong, so fast. I, I wonder I've had it for myself all this time. Tell me. Joe. And his son. You couldn't have done anything different. You didn't know. That's no choice. They decided and I was left with no part of it. <laughs> They assumed they were entitled to do what they did and no part of him and no part of Joe. <laughs> Alongside anger, there's fear and I... Because I want to do something about it, I want to fight, argue, fight, for, but... Uh, I'm scared it will hurt all of us. You mean father? I don't know I can do this to him. You have to. You must. Be kind, Bert. In your life. Farm. To bed, Mary. Why? Forgive those who trespass against us. Is that all? I don't understand. The way he treated us. The way his father was. 
He'd have trampled us into mud if he had a chance. And he very nearly did. Where does it stop, Grace? Who are we if no one is to be judged? Seven years ago, our daughter, she wanted to name the first cow that we bought. And I laughed at her, I laughed in her face because of that man. Because, because he'd met me hard. And now we have dirty head of cattle and she's named all of them. And I'm proud that I've changed enough for that to matter. What are you saying? What about me? Where are you? Where have you gone? today? No. Parasol? For the sun? I what? This is the last time I'm doing this. What? We're not delivering milk to the station after today. Oh. I see. So, I won't see you. Sorry about my mother. Why? She's fabulous. Uh, she is a, a keen interferer. Of course. She's organizing her son's future happiness. A happiness that apparently can only be realized through a good marriage. She's right. And what do you mean? Very good at fighting. Then, thank you even more. <laughs> Would you like to go dancing with me again? Uh, I'm sorry. Don't you have your own work to concern you, Gilbert? to go to the post office. I have been invited to tea by Lady Allingham. Of course. Mrs. Hankin. Why are you following me? 
So I'm there when you finally decide to talk to me. What would you like to talk about, Bert? Flowers. I want to take their pictures, and you know all the names. You have to address the flower by its name before taking the photograph. Well, it's only polite. You can drop me at the butchers. Thank you. Ready? Go, on, Molly. Chance to make your book. Bill Gibby, vote Labour. Labour puts health and happiness first. Madam, Bill Gibby, for the sake of our children, madam, vote Bill Gibby, vote Labour. Edmund Allen and madam, could we interest you in safety, prosperity? Can we have your vote, Edmund Allen? always had ideas above her station. <laughs> I have to start the linen twice. Oh, as if she isn't stiff enough already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Our Paul wouldn't want to see this. <sighs> oh, I loved him, you know. I know. <laughs> I'm in trouble, Margaret. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Mr. Hankin is quite the modernizer, Harriet. He's uh, he's recently opened a dance hall. <gasps> I love dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but I expect you'll find it a little more provincial than what you're accustomed to in London. <laughs> We're leaving. Big day. Mrs. Hankin. I'll take it we can count on you at the ballot box. I went first thing this morning. Edmund, of course. <laughs> Best of luck, darling. Not that you need it. Oh! I hear you've taken on Agnes Scrivener. Very generous of you. We've taken on one of the local girls as a maid. Whether she'll turn out to be suitable or not, there's so much one needs to teach them. <laughs> Still, it's a great kindness, given a condition. Well, excuse me, ladies. Can't keep Sheffield waiting. So, are you a great exponent of this uh, this new Charleston, Harriet? Oh, yes. Good. <laughs> Any of those booths over there? And your name? George Alley. There you go. Thank you. And your name? Doesn't matter.
stop that now. She's pregnant. I'm warning you. Leave her alone. She took employment under false pretenses. Remember who you are. Both your mother and hers were workhouse babies. To think that you can speak to her like that just because you married a shopkeeper. Go on, get out. Do not come back to my house. I've ordered. I wouldn't want to pass comment on that, Mr. Eyre. Lest I seem too sure of my opinions. I'm sorry if I've... Been... You've taken against me. I have a right to know why. It's just always about you. Your opinions and your rights and hang the effect on anybody else. What effect? On who? On you? And now you say nothing. You're a coward. And you are a hypocrite. You preach about socialism and then you go home to George Allingham. You know nothing of my marriage. I know that you've martyred yourself to it. Margaret? Yes, yes, yes. No. What is it? It's our Agnes. She's gone. Gone? Sheffield. Henry's taken her to station now. Come on. said no, was that because of the baby? Or just the baby? I'm sorry. Votes were counted and nobody won. The Conservatives had the most seats, but not enough to form a government on their own. So we waited. While down in Westminster, they talked and negotiated. 
The whole country waited for 40 days and 40 nights. Which makes it sound biblical, in a way, in terms of how much it mattered, what turned on it, it was. And then, 40 days later, a clear decision. No coalition, one party in power. I like to think that our village, after the king, was the first to know. I wanted you to hear it first. Rise like lions after slumber. In um vanquish your number. Shake your chains to earth like dew. Which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many. <laughs> they of you. <laughs> Wawa! Yes. Is it bad? Yes, it's bad. <sighs> it's a little early for whiskey. Well, only if one has slept. Well, what's done is done. Lady Macbeth, and no hint of irony. You've come a long way since Jane Austen. We dropped our guard. People have no idea what they've done. Socialism is a cancer. It's stupid, wrong, and dangerous. And I fought it with a narrow parochial campaign. Darling, your it campaign... was too small. These are such important times. I, I should have shouted it out. Do you know what is happening to people in Russia in the name of socialism? Do you have any idea what becomes of a society when character and personality is crushed by duty to the state? Bigger next time. Hmm? I can hear it. Hear what? The fight that's still left in you. We will come back from this. You will come back from this. Member of Parliament for 40 days. Hooray! Now, today I'm here to tell you that I'm a member of your new government. Hooray! I wanted to make my first speech here because this village has come to mean so much to me during this campaign. I'm humbled and privileged to represent you, and I make this promise to you now we will not rest until working people like you have proper wages safe working lives and a clear understanding that you are equal in every way to those who have always felt themselves superior to you. I am of you, for you, and I am with you every single step of the way. Abandoning me already? Oh, there's no point now, is there? What do you mean? Losing wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> I wasn't aware that we'd finalised the terms. People are never simple, Edmund. We all have our secrets. 
are complications. Marriage needn't be seen as restricting. Ours could offer us more freedom than we've ever had. Are you asking me to marry you? <laughs> I'm asking you to ask me to marry you. I'll drive. Where are we going? Who knows? <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? With you. What's his name? Sorry? Give me my grandson's name. The matter is closed. That's my final word. Yours is not the final word on anything anymore. <laughs> 